Hello my dolly dearies and welcome to another video. So today we're doing the next doll in our Yandere Simulator series. This doll is of course Miss Mujahina. Now this doll turned out to be a lot more complicated than I thought, with a lot of body modifications due to her body type. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. To match the rest of the rivals, we're going to be using this Ever After High as a base. So to start off, Take your sharp pair of scissors and snip away all of her hair. Do this by taking your scissors and snipping as close to the scalp and where the hair has been rooted as possible. Now that she's got nice stubbly hair, we can simply go and get rid of all of the hair and remove her head. I then took out all of the little bits, but we can get rid of the head for now, because we're going to start off by doing all of her body modifications. Since she's a lot taller, I decided to cut her body in multiple places. Then you can take your Dremel and gently saw off the legs. This was quite difficult to record because my stand didn't quite fit outside where I was doing the sawing. But cut very slowly around the edges, don't go too fast or the plastic will melt. Now that she's in pieces, we can get to work reassembling her to be tall. I drew little holes into her legs and filled them up with glue and stabbed a bit of wire to them. I then filled all of the gaps with hot glue. So with that done, we can have a go at sanding them. Or when you find that that inevitably doesn't work, you can take a scalpel and gently cut away all of the excess glue to try and thin it down. And then once you've gotten rid of all of the excess glue, you can take your epoxy sculpt and start going over all of the features to smooth them out and make them blend seamlessly with the skin. Which I completely failed to do this time because I overfilled all of the bits with glue. But hey ho, the more you know. Now that all of the epoxy sculpt is dry, I can take my sandpaper and sand all that down to try and make it blend as seamlessly as possible. Now that she's all sanded and everything is suitably dusty, we can get to painting! I tried to match the skin colour as closely as possible and went in with lots and lots of watery layers. Now that she's all dry and painted, we can get on to the clothing! I made some socks, but now on to the dress. I had to make a pattern out of masking tape because of the altered body type. So I then traced it out with pencil and went and cut it out. Sewing it together took me a couple tries and once I'd finished it, it did need a couple adjustments to fit properly. But I think it looks pretty good. So I went in and added all of the little details as well. I also added the dots onto the shirt and a small little pocket. Now, I didn't really like the socks, they looked a bit plasticky and rubbery. So snippity snip, time to remove those. I replaced them with some pale pink fabric, which I painted with very watery acrylic paint. But now, onto the head. We're going to be using the old hair from Mini Me, which some of you may remember from my earliest videos for this doll. Look at all of the gunk which is in her head. My glue is quite tough, so it doesn't look too nice. But I've carried on making the wefts, and now that we've got enough, just leave them to dry. But we can quickly get on to removing all of the face paint. To do this, take your pure acetone and go in small circular motions as to not smear the paint everywhere. Now that we've got a blank slate, we can get on to painting our head so it's all ready for the hair. Mix some pink paint to match the hair and just cover the scalp with it. Then glue down all of your hair so it's perfect for use. It took a little bit of styling to get it to lay flat, and we do that with a hairdryer. It's actually a tip which I learned from Poppin' Alti in one of her videos. 
but I hadn't really tried it before, but it's really useful and it worked really well. Now, into the sock of shame. Now that we've got all of her hair pinned back, we can get on with the face up. To start off, take your chalk pastels and blush all of the suitable areas, the nose, the lips and the eyes. You may not see the entire face up here, because I ended up having to crop it out, but that's fine, because I ended up absolutely hating this face up and redoing it in approximately 2 minutes time. But anyways, take your Liquitex matte varnish and waste it on a face which you end up removing. But now that that face up is done, we can remove the hair from the cursed burrito and get it ready for some styling. To start off on our hair styling adventure is the fringe. I tied it in a little rubber band and cut it just above the rubber band so it matched the character's design. Now, time to add the curls. I did this by not boil washing but by using a hair dryer since it seemed to work so well. It actually ended up looking quite nice and with a bit of a brush. It quite looked really, really good. So, with a bit more styling and pruning, which is completely off screen due to my horrible camera placement, it looked absolutely perfect. Now, this is the point where I decide that I don't like the face up and it's time to completely remove it and redo it. So, with that being said, let's remove all of this with acetone using the same method as before and get on with a new face up. Now that we've got our blank slate, let's go with some Mr. Super Player. I want to try something a little different, so I did some sketches with the eyes and tried to mimic them as closely as possible on the doll's face. I decided I wanted her to have a slightly different eye shape, a more downturned one, and for her to look a bit calmer and more serene.
I honestly think that this is one of the best face ups I've ever done. The eyes are just stunning. Time to go in with the eye highlights. Gently dab on some teeny tiny bits of white paint. Time to go in with the gloss varnish. And now that that's all dry, time to remove the hair from the Curse of Burrito a second time. Now with everything reattached and everything in one place, I think that she looks really pretty. On to the little head I took a teeny scrap of white fabric and sewed it into a little rectangle. Then I attached two pins to either side and stabbed them into her head because that's the only way I could get the hat to stay on. But time to paint on the little cross to match the rest of the outfit in her same signature paint. With all that done, we can get on to the final part of this doll, which is the shoes, which I absolutely hate making on every single doll. I love painting the shoes and doing delicate details on the pre-made Monster High shoes, Forever After High shoes, but I absolutely hate having to make them myself. But I have to for all of the dolls in this series. Thank god there aren't too many left to go. Now that you've finished making your doll's ankle casts and they're all dry, time to cut them off. Take a small pair of scissors and cut them down to size. Then you can go in with some epoxy sculpt to make the little heels. And once you've painted them with white, we are done! I'm so happy with how this doll turned out. Her eyes and face up are one of the best that I've ever done and I'm so proud of it. But anyways, thank you for watching my dolly dealies. Please like and subscribe and check out my discord if you have the time. But anyways, thank you for watching the video. Bye!